Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I am in my family's garden, close to where we live. My, my family members, Becky and my niece, Olivia, are here, are here. And Olivia's excited to see this story, to read the story with us. Um, I chose the, the very beginning of this book, the Jesus Storybook Bible, because it, it helps us remember the beginning of the, the creation of the world, right? And I thought, this is a really, actually a special day because today is Earth Day, and we remember all the things that God has made. Yeah, Earth Day. And so Olivia's decided that she is suddenly very curious and excited about cardinals. So she has written about cardinals today, and she even named them. What did you name your cardinals? What are their names? Pip Pip and Fly Fly. So she's been feeding them seeds and watching them. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Maybe in your own backyard, you can find some birds to give some bird seed to, or just go and see what kind of details you can see in your own yard that God has made. So, so this is the Jesus Storybook Bible, and my friends from St. Mark's, you have read this, some of these stories with, with me before. But I thought I'd remember the very beginning of the book. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write, read the very beginning. So this, they call it the story and the song. And it starts with a psalm. In the other, the last chapels, we've been reading the psalms and singing some of the psalms. So it's a good connection too. It says, the heavens are singing about how great God is and the skies are shouting it out. See what God has made. Day after day, night after night, they are speaking to us. God wrote, I love you. He wrote it in the sky and on the earth and under the sea. He wrote his message everywhere because God created everything in his world to reflect him like a mirror, to show us what he is like, to help us know him, to make our hearts sing. The way a kitten chases her tail, the way red poppies grow wild, the way a dolphin swims, the way fly fly and pip pip jump around and sing. <laughs> And God put it into words, too, and he wrote about it in a book called the Bible. So this is a retelling of some of the stories in the Bible, right? So, I want to make sure you see this picture. You can make <laughs> Yeah, I did. <laughs> now, some people think the Bible is a book of rules, telling you what you should and shouldn't do. The Bible certainly does have some rules in it. They show you how life works best, but the Bible isn't mainly about you and what you should be doing. It's about God and what he has done. Other people think the Bible is a book of heroes, showing people that you should copy. The Bible does have some heroes in it, but as you'll soon find out, most of the people in the Bible aren't heroes at all. They make some big mistakes, sometimes on purpose. They get afraid and they run away, and at times they are downright mean. So these are kind of a mixed up group of people in the Bible. Should we, do you want to know their names? Yeah. The names are here. So this is Noah. Do you want to say it after me? Yeah. Noah. Yeah. Moses. Yeah. You can say it after. <gasps> David. Yeah. Leah. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Mary. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Abraham. Yeah. And Saul. Yeah. Oh, there's some of the people. <laughs> That's the end of that, line, that row of people. No, the Bible is not a book of rules or a book of heroes. The Bible is most of all a story, an adventure story about a young hero who comes from a far country to win back his lost treasure. It's a love story about a brave prince who leaves his palace, his throne, everything to rescue the one he loves. It's like the most wonderful of fairy tales that has come true in real life. You see, the best thing about the story is that it's true. And there are lots of stories in the Bible, but all the stories are telling one big story. The story of how God loves his children and comes to rescue them. It takes the whole Bible to tell the story. And at the center of the story, there's a baby. Baby Jesus. Yeah. Every story in the Bible whispers his name. He is like the missing piece in a puzzle. The piece that makes all the other pieces fit together. And suddenly, you can see a beautiful picture. And this is no ordinary baby. This is the child on whom everything would depend. This is the child who would one day, but wait, 
Our story starts where all good stories start, right at the very beginning. So this is the beginning of Perfect Home. In the beginning, there was nothing. Can you close your eyes? And then there was light. Oh, your eyes, yep. Nothing to hear, nothing to feel, like the wind right now, nothing to see. Yep, it's blowing the page. There was only emptiness and darkness. That's okay. You got it? What do you see? Oh, do you see the bird? No, in the book. Oh, in the book? Oh, my gosh, I'm being slow. Oh, that one? No. Oh, that one. Oh, my goodness, I am being so slow. <laughs> I bet you were looking at the real one. What kind of bird, I wonder, is this? Like a robin, maybe? With a red belly? <laughs> You're right. There's a bird. You think this bird has a name? Toto. Okay, we're naming it Toto. Uh, so, God had a wonderful plan, and he said, I'm going to take this emptiness, and I'll fill it up out of the darkness. I'm going to make light, and out of that nothing, I'm going to make everything. Like a mommy bird flutters her wings over her eggs to help her babies hatch. God hovered over the deep, silent darkness. He was making life happen. God spoke. That's all. And whatever he said happened. God said, hello, light, and the light shone into the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. You're good, God said, and they were. And then God said, hello, sea, hello, sky, and a great space opened up wide and deep and high. You're good, God said, and they were. And then God said, hello, land, and there, splashing up to the oceans, came cliffs, mountains, sandy beaches, you're good, God said, and they were. Hello, tree, God said. Hello, grass and flowers. And everything everywhere burst into life. He made buds bud, shoots shoot, flowers flower. You're good, God said, and they were. And he made birds cheap. <laughs> Hello, stars, God said. Hello, sun. Hello, moon. And whizzing into the darkness came fiery globes, spinning around and around, whirling orange and purple and golden planets. You're good, God said, and they were. You can say, it is good. Do you do it with me? Yeah, it is good. <gasps> Hello, birds, God said. And with a fluttering and flipping and chirping and singing, birds filled the skies. Hello, fish, God said. And with a darting and dashing and wriggling and splashing, fish filled the seas. You are good, God said. And they were. And then God said, hello, animals. And everyone came out to play. The earth was filled with noisy noises, growling and gobbling and snapping and snorting and happy. Skerfluffling. That's a silly word. Skerfluffling. You are good, God said. And they were. And God saw that all he had made and he loved them, and they were lovely because he loved them. But God saved the best for last from the beginning. God had a shining dream in his heart. He would make people share his forever happiness, and they would be his children, and the world would be their perfect home. <laughs> so God breathed life into Adam and Eve. And when they opened their eyes, the first thing they ever saw was God's face. And when God saw them, he was like a new dad. You look like me. He said, you're the most beautiful thing I ever made. And Adam and Eve joined in the song of the stars and the streams and the wind and the trees. And the wonderful song of love to the one who made them. Their hearts were filled with happiness and nothing ever made them sad or lonely or sick or afraid. And God looked at everything he had made. Perfect, God said. And it was, but all the stars and the mountains and the oceans and everything was nothing compared to how much God loves his children, because God loves us too, right? He would move heaven and earth to be near, near them always. Whatever happened, whatever it cost him, he would always love them. And that's how the story began. So I just thought it was good to remember that story today and because it, that it's been so beautiful with the birds and the butterflies flying around, the plants growing. So it's a good thing to remember 
how it all started and that God has plans, right? And he loves us. So I, I think it's really fun. It makes me really happy to watch the birds and to see, see what they're doing, right? They're pretty silly, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I thought we could go ahead and read a little prayer and do a song. Does that sound good? Okay. Actually, let's do the song first. Do you want to do My God is So Big? Yes. Okay. You ready? So everybody show me your muscles. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. Show me your muscles. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. Thanks for singing that with me. So this is a book of prayers, prayers for faithful families. So there's a really short little prayer that's also like a poem. So we can just pray to God. Are you ready? So it's, this is to God. So God, you hear me when I pray. Your love is never far away. I can pray if I'm happy or lonely or sad. I can pray when I'm tired or worried or mad. I can pray every day and every season. I can even pray without a reason. Yep, we can pray everywhere we go. Well, thank you for reading that story with me. Um, I love you. Have a great day. <laughs>